हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सचित्र कर वेलकम टू दर्स फिजिक्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए न्यू चैप्टर सो प्रीवियसली वी हैव कंप्लीटेड काइनेमेटिक्स अंडर काइनेमेटिक्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मोशन इन ए स्ट्रेट लाइन और वी मे से मोशन इन वन डायमेंशन ओके If a body moves, or if a particle moves either along x-axis or along y-axis or along z-axis, okay, then it is motion in one dimension. Means we have completed motion in a straight line or one-dimensional motion. Okay, so now we are going to start motion two-dimensional motion. Two dimensional motion. So, two dimensional motion means motion on a plane. Motion on a plane. See, suppose we are taking Cartesian coordinate system. This is x-axis. This is y-axis, and this is z-axis. Okay. So this is x-y plane. This plane is x y plane, or we may take this is y z plane, or we may take this is x z plane. So, if you consider x y plane, and the body or a particle is moving on x y plane, then this is two dimensional motion, or we may consider y z plane. Or we may consider z x plane or x z plane. This is y z plane. This is x z plane, and this is x y plane. Okay. So motion on a plane. Suppose we are considering motion in any one of the plane. Okay. Let's consider our generalized discussion. A particle is moving on. X Y plane. A particle is moving on X Y plane. This is X axis. This is Y axis, and this is origin. A particle is moving in X Y plane. Then this is called as two-dimensional motion. Motion on a plane. Okay. So motion on a plane. We are going to discuss projectile. Projectile. Projectile motion is motion on a plane. Okay, let's consider what is the basic concept of projectile motion. We discuss concepts, derivations, and numericals. Okay, so we'll study about different types of projectiles, different different types of projectiles. But this is first lecture. Let's discuss about. What is a projectile? What is a projectile? Discussion may differ from book to book, but concept is same. Similarly, definitions may differ, but concept is same. So, what is a projectile? I am writing. We will enjoy the definition also. Projectile. Is a body which has no power of its own. Projectile is a body which has no power of its own. Okay, the body has no power. Means. Uh, <laughs> The body which has no power is called as a projectile. No, no, no. This is not sufficient. Okay, which has no power of its own, it is thrown or projected to space and moves under. Moves under the effect of 
ग्राविट एंड एयर रेजिस्टेंस दिस इज कंप्लीट डेफिनेशन ऑन प्रोजेक्टाइल प्रोजेक्टाइल इज ए बॉडी व्हिच हैज नो पावर ऑफ इट्स ओन ओके सपोज दिस इज ए बॉडी दिस बॉडी हैज नो पावर आई मे यूज दिस बॉडी आई मे थ्रो दिस बॉडी इन एनी डायरेक्शन व्हाट एवर आई वांट दिस बॉडी मे बी ए प्रोजेक्टाइल बट टू बी ए प्रोजेक्टाइल टू बी ए प्रोजेक्टाइल it is thrown or projected to space the body has no power of its own it is thrown to the space whatever be the direction whatever be the direction of throw it should be thrown to project it should be thrown to space it is thrown to the space and you know when the body moves in space <laughs> either you may throw With an angle, with a horizontal, or you may throw horizontal. Okay, whatever may be the angle of projection, angle of throwing. Okay, it must be projected to space. And you know, when a body moves in space, then there are two effects on the body. Means gravity. pulls the body in downward direction vertically downward direction and viscous resistance means air resistance simply if you are moving in air by two wheeler or four wheeler whatever may be or you are running <laughs> then also air opposes your motion so air resistance or it is called as fluid resistance or it is called as viscous force of course in this subject in projectile motion we are neglecting air resistance neglect we are not considering air resistance though air resistance practically opposes the motion we are not considering air resistance okay so projectile is a body which has no power of its own it is thrown to space and moves under effect of gravity and air resistance what we have discussed in this subject we are neglecting air resistance if air resistance is neglected then derivations will not be same okay so what are examples different examples of projectile motion you may take any example <laughs> based on this theory a cricket ball thrown by a player suppose a cricket ball is thrown by a player at any angle this is a projectile okay bullet fired from gun bullet is a body which has no power okay it is given a force by using gun and it moves in air means moves in space okay and gravity pulls it down we'll see, we'll see we'll see different examples okay cricket ball thrown by a player bullet fired from gun javelin javelin thrown by an athlete okay so many examples can be cited okay so rocket rocket may be the example of projectile but not simply saying rocket rocket is a projectile after its fuel is consumed so long as fuel is there fuel provides energy to rocket for its motion suppose a rocket is thrown or projected to space and after moving some distance its fuel is consumed then it will not fall immediately due to inertia it will move up and then gravity will pull it down so rocket after its fuel is consumed is it clear and finally the path followed by projectile or path followed by a body path followed by a projectile means a body which is thrown is called as 
is called as trajectory. Path followed by projectile is called as trajectory. Okay. We will discuss on different types of projectile. But in lecture 1, in this lecture, we will discuss a specific case of projectile. Number 1, a body thrown or projected at an angle with horizontal or vertical, whatever may be written, horizontal from ground. A body thrown at an angle with horizontal from ground. Of course, in coming lecture, I am showing you this is a projectile. Number two, a body thrown horizontal. Body thrown from a height. From a height. A body thrown from a height. See. We will discuss uh, the second one, means uh, the second point in next lecture. This is a height. You may consider a tower or a building, a body may be thrown along this direction, means horizontal, or may be thrown along this direction, making an angle with horizontal, or may be thrown along this direction, making an angle with horizontal. We may throw the body along horizontal direction or making an angle with horizontal either in up or in downward direction. Okay. So, number three, inclined projection. Inclined projection. See, this is an inclined plane. A body is thrown from this plane, let making an angle alpha with a velocity it will move on the plane or you may consider this is an inclined plane okay body is thrown from the inclined plane making an angle this will move like this okay this is moving this body is moving up the plane and this body is moving down the plane so there are different types of projectiles uh, to be discussed but till this lecture we will discuss this part one a body thrown at an angle with horizontal from ground. Okay. Can I erase all this now? We will start number one. Body thrown at an angle with horizontal from ground. Okay. This is horizontal surface or ground. This is horizontal surface or ground. This is ground. Suppose you just take a, an example or you think you kick the football, you kick the football from the ground or a cricket ball is thrown by a player from ground, not ground from a height. <laughs> you kick the football, okay. You kick the football from ground along this direction. So velocity means initial velocity given to the body is u. A body thrown at an angle, let angle of projection is theta. Okay. First, what we need? Number one, we are going to find nature of nature of trajectory. Nature, nature of trajectory, what we have discussed, the path followed by projectile is called as trajectory. We have to see what is the nature of path followed by the projectile. Okay. Thereafter, we will go to different points. Uh, means uh, we, have, we will go to derivations to get different parts of projectile motion. This is the first one, nature of trajectory. body is thrown with a velocity of making an angle theta with horizontal and as we know, 
this velocity can be resolved into two rectangular components c suppose this is vector a this is x axis this is y axis this angle is theta then component of a along x axis as you know ax is equal to a cos theta you may take direction i cap and this is component of a along y axis along x axis ax along y axis ay this is a sin theta you may take direction along positive y axis and unit vector is j cap and angle between them is 90 degree these are two rectangular components okay then another point you know very important from vector if theta is 90 then ax is 0 means a cos theta a cos 90 is 0 you have to keep it in your mind a vector has no component if theta is 0 degree then a vector has no component along x axis Okay. If theta is 90 degree, then, then a y is equal to a. If theta is 90 degree, then a y is equal to a. And component along x axis is 0. Just remember, you know it. A vector has no component at an angle 90 degree to its own direction. First, these two concepts, then we will go to derivation to get nature of trajectory. Okay, fine. Nature of trajectory, body is thrown with a velocity u, then this velocity may be resolved into two rectangular components. So this is along x-axis, this is along y-axis. X component of initial velocity u, x is u cos theta and direction is along x-axis. Similarly, y component of Initial velocity is u y. We may take it. We may take it. U y is equal to u sin theta. This is the positive y axis. Okay. And again we know acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity. Acts in vertically downward direction. We have discussed each and every concept in from basic that motion under gravity under kinematics okay motion in a straight line and under which we have discussed motion under gravity a body is thrown in vertically upward direction what is time of flight what is maximum height etc you must go through the lecture okay so acceleration due to gravity is in y axis but in a negative y direction opposite to u y okay so let's divide two parts x direction and y direction what are the concepts along x direction initial velocity is u cos theta along y direction initial velocity is u sin theta Along a, along y direction, acceleration is g. See, u sin theta along positive y axis direction, g along negative y direction. So, acceleration is opposite to the direction of velocity. And we have discussed, we have taken the convention that initial direction is taken as positive. u sin theta is positive. So, g is negative. So, from very beginning, let's take minus g. Let's take minus g. Along x direction, acceleration along x direction is 0 since acceleration due to gravity is in vertically downward direction. So, this is x axis. So, along x axis, acceleration due to gravity is 0. Okay. So, along x direction, no force is acting along the direction of velocity or opposite to the direction of velocity. Acceleration due to the force. Force means here force is weight of the body. And acceleration is force upon mass. That is equal to 
axillar sun due to gravity. So direction of weight of a body is in vertically downward direction. Okay. So to increase or decrease the velocity, force is required either along the direction of velocity or opposite to the direction of velocity. Okay. If force is acting along the direction of velocity, then magnitude of velocity increases. If force is acting opposite to the direction of velocity, then magnitude of velocity decreases. And you know, if force is acting perpendicular to direction of velocity, changes direction without changing magnitude, we have discussed all this. So, acceleration due to gravity has no component, so acceleration along x-axis is zero. So, what is the output? Since acceleration is zero, then this velocity always remains constant. This velocity always remains constant. Ux always remains constant. But Uy, U sine theta changes because due to effect of acceleration due to gravity. Okay. You know this? Then what you have observed if a body is thrown making an angle with horizontal as you have observed the body is move body will move in a curved path then at any point suppose at this point suppose at this point velocity is u cos theta it is constant horizontal velocity is always constant along x direction but along this direction this is not u y. This velocity along y axis is not u y. Why? Because when a body is thrown, the body, the body moves under combined effect of see u cos theta tends to move the body along positive x-axis and u sin theta tends to move the body along positive y-axis. u cos theta takes the body along positive x-axis direction. u sin theta tends to take the body in upward direction or along y-axis. Okay. But u sin theta is opposed by acceleration due to gravity. Means this is retarded motion velocity and accel acceleration are all in the opposite direction so motion is retarded so what is nature of motion if a body is projected from horizontal making an angle projected from ground making an angle then it moves under combined velocity means moves under combined effect of constant horizontal velocity and decreasing upward velocity, decreasing velocity in upward direction due to effect of gravity. Okay. Where you may see acceleration, sorry, velocity, horizontal velocity is u cos theta. Here also u cos theta. Here also u cos theta. But vertical velocity will change c. U y means u sin theta takes the body in upward direction, so the body moves up. This is the highest position. And this is maximum height reached by the body. At highest position, u sin theta is zero. Because due to the effect of gravity, u sin theta goes on decreasing and it takes the body in upward direction. This is maximum height or maximum. Uh, this is maximum uh, height from the ground reached by the body due to the effect of u sin theta. But here, u sin theta is zero. If u sin theta were not zero, the body would move again in upward direction. u sin theta takes the body in upward direction and it is retarded due to effect of gravity at the highest position. u sin theta is zero. So at the highest position only velocity exists that is u cos theta. But acceleration due to gravity is in vertically downward direction c. This is the position where velocity and acceleration are perpendicular to each other. If acceleration is g, then force is mg. Then force and velocity are in opposite direction. So now direction will 
change from this position of course direction is going changing from highest position it will move down okay thereafter you see at highest position velocity in vertically downward direction is zero because u cos theta has no component in vertically downward direction so here initial velocity is zero in downward direction and again horizontal velocity is constant but here acceleration due to gravity is acting in downward direction from highest position from highest position body will move under combined effect of constant horizontal velocity and increasing velocity in vertically downward direction velocity will increase in vertically downward direction due to effect of gravity so this is the basic output if a body is thrown at an angle with horizontal it moves under combined effect of constant horizontal velocity and decreasing velocity in vertical upward direction till 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 it reaches highest position and thereafter thereafter it moves under combined effect of constant horizontal velocity and increasing velocity in vertical downward direction this is basic output okay then our aim is to get nature of trajectory what is nature of trajectory this is x axis body is thrown with a velocity u making an angle theta horizontal component u x is equal to u cos theta and vertical component is u sin theta okay body is moving like this let the body is thrown or projected when time is zero and coordinates are zero zero value of x is zero value of y is zero let at any instant of time t the body is at p when time is t and coordinate of this point are x y means in time t the body has reached at p and coordinates are x y means to reach at p body has covered a distance x along x axis and distance y along y axis clear again let's take x direction and y direction along x direction u x is equal to u cos theta that is constant and acceleration along x axis means x direction is zero then what is displacement along x direction x Just apply the equation. S is equal to u t plus half a t squared. So displacement is x in place of s is x u. U means u x into t plus half acceleration along x axis a at a x into t squared. So u x is u cos theta into time is t plus half into zero into t squared. So x is equal to u cos theta. m to t and time taken by the body to reach at point p t is equal to x by u cos theta then along y direction displacement is y along y axis again put the same equation s is equal to u t plus half a t square then along y axis initial velocity is u y u y u t plus half a t square a y m to t square along y axis initial velocity is u sin theta acceleration is minus g opposite to u sin theta then s means displacement is y u y into t plus half a y into t square y is equal to u y is u sin theta into t plus half acceleration is minus g into t square then y is equal to u sin theta into t time taken by the body to reach at point p means time taken by the body to reach at point p is t that time is equal to time taken by the body to cover distance x and time taken by the body to cover distance y so u sin theta into t t is equal to x by cos theta minus 1 by 2 g t square t square means x square Divided by 
u square cos square theta. So y is equal to x by sorry, this is u cos theta. U will get cancelled, then tan theta into x plus minus g by 2 u square cos square theta into x square. The body is projected at a given angle. If theta is constant, theta is given, then tan theta is constant. Let's take k1. x plus g is constant at a given place. Acceleration due to gravity is constant and u cos theta is constant. So u square cos square theta is constant. So whole factor minus g by 2 u square cos square theta is constant. Let's take k2 into x square. So this is this is equation of parabola. So finally we may say nature of trajectory nature of trajectory is parabolic. This is a car path. The name of this car is parabola in accordance with this equation and you remember this equation like this so y is equal to x tan theta tan theta into x x tan theta x tan theta minus minus g x square divided by 2u square cos square theta very important for numerical purpose this is equation of projectile fired from ground at an angle. This equation, this equation may be written in different ways for your future purpose, for your competitive purpose. I am writing the equation. Is this diagram is clear to you? Okay. Then this equation may be written in different ways. We will use the equations in for good numericals. Y may be written as x tan theta in 1 minus x by r where r is horizontal range i will discuss about this horizontal range okay this is another equation very important this is in terms of horizontal range we will discuss what is horizontal range okay <laughs> then again y is equal to x tan theta whole into 1 minus x tan theta divided by h where h is where x h is maximum height again we will discuss about maximum height and derivation from the for this so this equation may be stated in different ways and these are applicable for numericals for competitive rates okay so uh, to get this equation, derivation is required. I am not doing derivations. Just uh, keep it in your mind for numerical purpose. Then some numericals on the basis of equation of trajectory will solve numerical on the basis of fourth equation. I have kept some questions. One or two questions with me. Let's discuss. Yes, question number one from concept of physics. Very good question. Uh, right approach for this uh, equation of trajectory concept of physics of uh, this question you may follow from the book also the question is like this figure shows figure shows 11.7 feet wide ditch 11.7 feet wide ditch 11.7 feet wide ditch with approach roads at an, at an angle 15 degree with approach roads at an angle 15 degree it is shown in figure I will draw the figure with horizontal with horizontal with horizontal Okay. With what minimum speed should a motorbike be moving on the road so that it is it safely crosses the ditch? 
with what minimum speed a motorbike should move on the road so as to cross the ditch safely it is given that length of motorcycle is 5 meter it is given length of motorcycle is 5 meter and the diagram is like this this is a ditch these are approach roads These are approach roads. Motorcycle will move on this road and this is the ditch. It will safely cross the ditch and width of this ditch is 11.7 feet. But length of motorcycle is 5 feet. Okay. So the motorcycle crosses the ditch will take the instant when the first means front wheel will leave the ground motorcycle approaches motorcycle approaches and it leaves the first front wheel leaves the ground and this is rear wheel from this instant when the front wheel leaves the ground then it starts crossing okay so what is total distance the motorcycle has to cross let's take x this is along x axis and this is along y axis so what is total distance the motorcycle has to cover means length of ditch plus length of sorry 5 feet sorry 5 feet plus 5 feet 11.7 feet plus 5 feet this will be 16.7 feet and motorcycle moves from this point and the first front wheel leaves the ground and it reaches on this point again okay. okay then vertical displacement y is 0 from this point to this point there is no vertical displacement it leaves the front wheel leaves at A and rear wheel reaches at B then it crosses the ditch then vertical displacement is 0 you just use this equation here y is 0 x tan theta minus z x square our equation divided by 2 u square speed is asked to 2 u square cos square theta then uh, x tan theta is equal to g x square divided by 2 u square cos square theta then u square directly writing u square is equal to g x square divided by 2u square cos square theta into x tan theta just cross multiply just cross multiply and it will become gx square divided by x cancel square gx divided by u square we have cross multiply this is 2 2 cos square theta into tan theta means sin theta divided by cos theta cos theta cancel square then u square is equal to g x divided by 2 cos theta sin theta means sin 2 theta is it clear is it clear then i am doing here u is equal to root of g x by sin Theta. then all data we you know put value of g put value of g here 
that 9.8 x x is 16.7 Sorry, not take G9. G is equal to 32 foot per second square. It is given in a PS system. G is 32. G is 32. 32 foot per second square. Then sine 2 theta divided by sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta means here theta is 15 degree given. Oh, I have not drawn here, not written here. Theta is 15. 2 into 15 means sine. 30. Then solving it, solving it, you will get approximately, approximate value, approximately you will get u is equal to 32 foot per second, actually it will come 32 point something, I have calculated, but in book it is given answer 32 foot per second, approximate answer is given, 32 point something will come, you will take it 32 foot per second, then second portion. Another question, I think you have enjoyed this one, question number two. Question number two, okay, easy question, a horse pipe, a horse pipe, a horse pipe lying on ground should stream of water at an angle 60 degree with horizontal, I am showing you in diagram, this is ground. This is a horse pipe. Water jet in thicker water jets are coming. Okay. Ejects water with a velocity like this. So water moves and strikes on ground. But before that, there is a wall. This is a wall. This is a wall. Okay. Question is like this as horse pipe is lying on ground, so stream of water. At an angle 60 degree. So stream of water at an angle 60 degree with horizontal with a speed 20 meter per second. Okay. 20 meter per second. Uh, at what height will the water jet strike a wall at a distance of 10 meter? A wall is at a distance of uh, 10 meter. Okay. 10 meter. Then it is asked at what height? The water jet will strike the wall. This is the wall. Just uh, keep the, the question in your mind. A horse pipe is ejecting water, throwing water with a velocity of 20 meter per second, making an angle 60 degree. With horizontal, there is a vertical wall at a distance 10 meter. Then it is asked at what height the water jet will strike the wall. Then it is asked to find y and given a given x, then use this equation. Then y is equal to x, just use this equation. x 10 meter, 10 theta, 10 60, minus g 9.8, x square, 10 square, divided by 2u square, means 2 into 20 square, into cos square theta, means cos square. 60 degree. Put all these values and you will get your answer. Y will become 12.32 meter. Just solve it. Okay. Calculation you can do easily. <laughs> Just you want how to get the method. Okay. This is about nature of trajectory. This is about nature of trajectory. Then we will go to different concepts and approach numerical simultaneously. This uh, lecture will be a longer one because we will uh, cover all the concepts projectile thrown at an angle with horizontal. Of course, we will do some fundamental numericals and I will take another lecture to solve some conceptual numericals only applicable for competitive in this lecture. I will do some numericals, board based means fundamental numericals. Okay. Projectile. Velocity is u, making an angle theta, horizontal component u cos theta, vertical component u sin theta, this is motion on a plane, 
because you cast it attempts to cover distance along x axis and u sin theta attempts to cover distance along y axis okay is it clear so as we have discussed this is any point p e is equal to x y the one has covered a distance along x axis y distance along y axis okay so motion on a plane means uh, coordinate along x axis is changing and along y axis is also changing okay then the body is projected at this point 0 j when time is 0 and body strikes on the ground when time is t means our first heading is time of flight t see the equation of projectile shows us this is a track this is a parabolic this is a parabola means nature of trajectory is parabolic this is maximum height this is highest point here only velocity as I have discussed u cos theta and here u sin theta is 0 and initial velocity is 0 in downward direction 0 again acceleration due to gravity is 0 okay as we have discussed time of flight what is time of flight the body starts its motion when time is 0 and strikes the ground when time is t means during this time t the body is in space body flies the time of flying is time of flight <laughs> time of flying is time of flight the time of flight means the time during which the body remains in space remains in space body leaves the ground at t is equal to 0 and reaches on ground time is equal to t so during this time means in this time the body flies in space remains in space so now consider consider vertical motion vertical motion means y direction y direction vertical motion means y direction body starts from ground and reaches at ground body starts from ground and reaches on ground then there is a horizontal displacement this maximum horizontal displacement is r r per waves but what body starts from ground and reaches on ground what is vertical displacement vertical displacement is zero vertical displacement is zero so along y direction displacement is zero along y direction initial velocity is u sin theta along y direction acceleration is minus g okay then now use the equation ac is equal to ut plus half it is then here s is 0 vertical displacement is 0 u means u y u y acceleration along y axis u y is u sin theta total time is t plus half a y is minus g t square is total time square so half g t square Take it to left side is equal to u sin theta into t p square t get cancelled then time of flight is equal to 2u sin theta divided by g okay. see but it starts from this position and this is highest position this time is time of ascent and from highest position to ground this journey for time t to this time is P1, so this time is T2. So T1 is time of ascent, the body is raising in upward direction, time of ascent and T2 is time of descent. See, we have already discussed while when we are discussing on motion and gravity, if air resistance is neglected, if air resistance is neglected, then time of ascent is equal to time of descent. Means if total time t is equal to 2 u sin theta by g, then both are equals to u sin theta by g. Let's prove it. Time of ascent. Time of ascent. T1. See. Considering y direction, initial velocity is u sin theta, 
at highest position time of ascent means time taken by the body to reach at highest position here final velocity is zero initial velocity is zero sin theta acceleration is minus g then just use the equation v is equal to u plus a v u y u y final velocity is zero u y is u sin theta a y is minus g time is t y time is t1 then g t1 is equal to u sin theta so t1 is equal to u sin theta by g but total time is 2 u sin theta by g thus if time of ascent is u sin theta by g then obviously time of descent is u sin theta by g thus if air resistance is neglected then time of ascent is equal to time of descent this is about Time of flight. Okay, I'm writing the output formula here. P is equal to two u sine theta divided by g. And time of ascent is u sine theta by g. Time of descent is also u sine theta by g. Okay. We are not required now. Maximum height reached by the projectile is h. So again, considering motion in y direction, initial velocity is u sin theta, acceleration is minus g. Okay. So maximum height is h. So here, final velocity is zero at maximum height. U sin theta is zero. Just use the equation. U square is v square is equal to u square plus two s. So vertical displacement is h. Means y is equal to h. So v square is zero. U square u y square. Acceleration is a y. A y. So u y square means u square sin square theta plus two. Acceleration along y axis is minus g. S S means H, so this is minus U sine square theta minus two G H, so two G H is equal to U square sine square theta, so maximum height is U square sine square theta by two G. This is your formula, maximum height U square sine square theta by two G. You see here, maximum height is What is what can be done to increase maximum height? You can increase u. <laughs> yes, yes. By increasing u, maximum height can be increased. But h b if u is constant, without increasing speed, h is directly proportional to sine square theta. If sine square theta is maximum, then height is maximum. And sine square theta is maximum when theta is ninety degree means. Maximum height can be attained if theta is 90 degree, and that will be equal to u square by 2g sine square theta is 1. Okay, so this is maximum height. Then horizontal range. Ah, so it is the maximum horizontal distance covered by the projectile. In time of flight, maximum horizontal distance covered by the projectile during time of flight means time taken by the projectile is t. Now considering motion in x direction, range is in x direction. In x direction, initial velocity u x is equal to u cos theta. U x is equal to u cos theta. And acceleration along x direction is zero, and time is t. And maximum distance x is equal to r. Then use the equation again. S is equal to u t plus r by t square. Then this is u x. This is x. In place of displacement here, s is equal to r. R is equal to u x. U x is u cos theta. And total time is t plus r. Acceleration along x-axis is zero into t square. This factor is zero. Then range is equal to u cos theta into time of flight. And you know time of flight 
as we have taken to you sin theta divided by g okay then range is equal to u into u u into u u square into 2 this is 2 sin theta cos theta divided by g then range is equal to u square sin 2 theta by g this is our formula range is equal to u square sin 2 theta divided by g okay so maximum height is u square by 2g when theta is 90 degree condition to have maximum height if a body is thrown in vertically upward direction rather taking any angle other than 90 degree then height will be maximum then what is condition for maximum range i am erasing this part condition condition for maximum range if range is maximum see r is directly proportional to we can increase range by increasing speed but without in, in, increasing speed means if speed is kept constant then range is proportional to sin 2 theta if sin 2 theta is maximum then the range is max then sin 2 theta is maximum when it is 1 this is maximum so when sin 2 theta is equal to sin 90 and obviously 2 theta is equal to 90 and theta is equal to 45 if sin 2 theta is 1 then maximum range is equal to u square by g when when theta is equal to 45 okay this can be also done in different way i am showing you this is formula for range we have got theta is equal to 45 range is maximum you know any maximum is constant any maximum is constant if range is maximum then r is constant and you know derivative of any constant is zero and again we know r is directly proportional to sin 2 theta means d r d theta is equal to zero derivative of any constant is zero thus differentiate d by d theta of u square sin 2 theta divided by g is equal to zero then u square by g constant factors bring outside sorry d by d theta d by d theta of sin 2 theta is cos 2 theta and d by d theta of 2 theta is 2 is equal to zero means cos 2 theta is equal to zero so cos 2 theta is 0 means cos 2 theta must be equals to cos 90 because cos 90 is 0 so 2 theta is 90 means theta is 45 in either way you can prove it okay for board level discussion in either way you can prove it for maximum range angle required is 45 degree okay so up to this uh, we have discussed on now some numericals on the basis of our discussion the first so one or two sorry <laughs> some three or four questions only uh, the first question first question a projectile the easier one school level question a projectile i will discuss in separate lecture conceptual numericals for competitive this is board discussion a projectile is projected is projected At an angle, at an angle, sixty degree, with with vertical, okay, okay, not horizontal, with vertical, with vertical, sixty degree with vertical, with a velocity of ninety-eight meter per second, with a velocity. Of 98 meter per second, then find time to reach maximum height. Okay, okay. Find time to reach 
maximum height. B width. In B width it is asked maximum height. What is maximum height? C width. It is asked horizontal range. Easier width, horizontal range. C. First point is at an angle 60 degree with vertical C. This angle is 60 degree with vertical. Then our required angle is 30 degree because total angle is 90 degree. Then here, here, theta is equal to 30 degree. Now, a bit time to reach maximum height. We know time to reach maximum height is time of ascent and P1 is equal to U sin theta y. U is 98, let's put all these values, U is 98 meter per second and theta is 30 degree G, you may put 9.8, then you can get your answer, I, what I remember, this answer is U 98 sin 30 is 1 by 2, means uh, 49 divided by 98. 49 divided by 98. No. U is 98. Sin 30 is 1 by 2. Divided by, sorry, 9.8. So, T1 is equal to uh, 98 to 9.8. This is 10. 10 by 2 is 5 seconds. Okay. Then, B, B. Maximum height. U square. Sin square. Theta by 2. You put all these values. U is uh, 98 sine square theta. Sine square 60. 3 by 4. Sorry. 30 degree. Sine square 31 by 4. Theta is 30 degree. Divided by 2 into 9.8. And solving it. Solving it. You will get. This is 122.5 meter. And with C. Horizontal range. U square. Sine 2 theta. Means sine 60. Theta is 30 degree, 2 theta is sin 60 divided by g. Okay, put value of u 98 and solve it, you will get in terms of uh, root 3, in terms of root 3, then you may solve it, you may solve it. 490 root 3 meter, you may solve it uh, by putting the value of root 3. These are the answers, question number 1, then question number 2. Question number two. Question number two is a man can throw. A man can throw. Very easy question. A ball to a maximum. To a maximum horizontal distance 100 meters. Hundred meter. To what maximum height he can throw the ball? This is very easy question. Just follow this equation. Maximum horizontal distance means maximum range. It is given hundred meter. And you know maximum range, formula for maximum range is u square by g, that is equals to 100 meter. Then it is asked what maximum height he can throw, maximum height. Here we have taken u square by 2g. And this is half of maximum range or max by 2. This is u square by g, this is u square by 2g. That's the half. Half the maximum range, the maximum height which he can throw is 100 divided by 2. 100 divided by 2, that is equals to 50 meters. Is it clear? Okay. Then third question. This is an easier question. Third question. What should be the angle of projection so that horizontal range is equal to maximum vertical height? Question number 3. What should be angle of projection? I'm writing in this way. You can catch it. Okay. What should be the angle of projection for which 
for which range maximum horizontal distance is equal to maximum height reached by the body okay let's uh, half the answer by deriving the equation range formula for range u square sin 2 theta divided by g height maximum height height maximum considering angle theta u square sin square theta by 2 g so if theta is 90 degree then it is we have discussed motion of gravity body thrown in vertical upward direction this is not the case we are considering projectile motion parabolic path so we do consider any angle theta okay then u square u square get cancelled g g get cancelled then sin 2 theta means 2 sin theta cos theta is equal to sin square theta divided by 2 sin theta sin square get cancelled then 2 into 2 is 4 sin theta by cos theta cross multiply it is tan theta is equal to 4 then what is value of theta theta is equal to tan inverse 4 then this is the angle of projection for which horizontal range is equal to maximum height so if a body is projected at an angle tan inverse 4 then horizontal range will equal to maximum height then on the basis of this equation uh, you may take here tan theta sin theta by okay tan theta is equal to 4 then on the basis of this equation another question is given another question is given on the basis of this equation question number 4 if if horizontal range is equal to 4 root 3 times maximum height horizontal range is 4 root 3 times maximum height find the angle of projection ok so what you know what you know we have already discussed uh, that theta is equal to tan inverse 4 means h by r is equal to I am writing again maximum height by horizontal range maximum height is u square sin square theta by 2g and range is u square sin 2 theta means 2 sin theta cos theta divided by g g get cancelled u square u square cancel sin square theta sin theta get cancelled then h by r is equal to sin theta by cos theta is tan theta divided by 4 this is the condition so if range is equal to 4 root 3 times if range is equal to 4 root 3 times h then here here h by r r is equal to 4 root 3 times of height is equal to tan theta by 4 4 4 get cancelled h is cancelled then tan theta is equal to 1 by root 3 then theta is equal to 30 degree 2 is your question ok then another one 5th bit thereafter after completing this question we will go to some other theory of this projectile a boy wants to throw a letter. Boy wants to throw. This is a common question given in general books. Boy wants to throw a letter to his friend. To his friend. Wants to lay, throw a letter wrapped on a stone. to his friend wrapped on a stone to his friend because the only letter can fly away so it is wrapped on a stone there are different tricks to throw the letter <laughs> okay so across a street across a street okay a 40 meter wide across a street of 40 meter wide okay the boy's window is 10 meter below his friend's window the boy's window is 
is 10 meter below his friend's weight. Then it is asked how should he throw it to pass in his friend's window. Horizontally. See, suppose the body is thrown from this point with a velocity of making an angle theta with horizontal, theta with horizontal, then this is the position means the highest point where motion becomes horizontal. Horizontal. Motion becomes horizontal at highest point. So total horizontal distances are, this is symmetric. So this distances are by two. This distances are by two. That's C. This is the road width or street. This is boy's window. This is boy's window. This is his friend's window. Friend's window. And he throws a letter with a velocity u, making an angle theta, then it goes and enters in the window horizontally. So this must be maximum height. So this distance is r by 2. This is maximum height and this is r by 2. Then r by 2 is given. r by 2 is given. 40 meter. Then range is equal to 80 meter. Then maximum height is 10 meter. This is our data. Then it is asked how should we throw it means it is asked to calculate theta. Okay, I am erasing the question. You have we will get a trick point. I have written the data here. How should we throw with an angle theta? You just see maximum height u square. Okay, okay, we have already discussed h by r is equal to theta, theta by 4. Just use this. This is the trick. To get the answer easily. h by r is equal to tan theta by 4. h and r are given. So tan theta divided by 4 is equal to maximum height is 10 meter. Horizontal range is 40 meter. Then tan theta by 4 is equal to 1 by 4, 4, 4 get cancelled. Okay. Then theta is equal to, tan theta is equal to 1, theta is equal to 35 degrees. Oh. H by R. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. Sorry. Range is given 80. Sorry. Range is given 80. Then tan theta. 4, this is 8, this is 2, then tan theta is equal to 1 by 2, then theta is equal to tan inverse 1 by 2, sorry. Answer is given tan inverse 1 by 2, this is the correct answer, range is 8, okay. So we have discussed up to this condition for maximum range, then another beautiful concept, another beautiful concept I know. Today's class will take some time. Only two concepts are left. Only two concepts. Have patience. This question, this uh, lecture will be longer. What I have told you before. So these are the formula. Another conceptual point. Complementary. Complementary projection. Complementary projection, what is meant by complementary projection? It is projection, projection of two projectiles with same speed but with Different angles 
Full half. Same horizontal range. Highly conceptual. And several points will come under complementary projection. This will be longer lecture. See students, for beginners I am giving all the points and also I am showing how to solve the fundamental numericals but this one is conceptual. Two angles of projection, two projectiles, two projectiles are thrown at different angles means two angles of projection. With same speed, with same speed, to have same horizontal range. If two projectiles are thrown, with different angles but with same speed and if they acquire same horizontal range then this projection is called as this projection is called as complementary projection okay suppose this is horizontal surface this is a flat ground you think like this two bodies are projected this is first body with velocity u from this point and another body is projected Parallel to this point with same speed. With same speed. Okay. Suppose this angle is alpha and this angle is theta. Two angles of projection. So this body moves and strikes the ground on this point, and another body strikes at this point means parallel. So another body also covers same horizontal range. Okay. Then this is called as complementary projection. Then these two angles, theta and alpha, for which range of two projectiles is same, theta and alpha, two angles, theta and alpha, are called complementary angles. Complementary angles, then we have to find condition for complementary angle. Uh, projection means relation between theta and alpha considering angle theta. Range is equal to u square sine 2 theta divided by g equation 1. Okay. Equation 1. Then this equation can be written. Range is equal to u square sine 180 degree minus 2 theta by g. Because sin 180 minus theta is sin theta. Sin 180 minus 2 theta is sin 2 theta. The same form. Then range may be written u square sin. Bring to common 90 minus theta divided by g. This is equation 2. See, for theta, range is a. And for 90 minus theta, angle 90 minus theta, range is same. Means range is same for angle theta and range is um, same range is for 90 minus theta if you take left. 90 minus theta is alpha, then theta plus alpha is equal to 90. So this is condition for complementary projection if sum of two angles is 90 degree. And two projectiles are projected with angles theta and alpha and sum of angles is 90 degree and speed is same for both, then they will have same range. Okay. So if one body is projected with well with angle 60 degree and other with 30 degree, speed is same, then they will, they will have same um, uh, range. Then if one projectile is fired with angle 75 degree and another with 15 degree with same speed, then also they will have same range. And similarly, 40 degree, 50 degree, sum of 40 and 50 degree is 90 degree, then they will have same range. Okay. Then under complementary projection, there are some beautiful points. Complementary projection. Okay. Range is same. Range is same for theta and alpha and condition is theta plus alpha is 90 degree. See, this is a projectile. This is a projectile. Okay. Both are projected with same speed u. But this angle is alpha. This angle is theta. Okay. Then theta plus alpha is 90 degree. Range is same but for this projectile. Maximum height is let h1 
and for this projectile maximum height is x2 one projectile reaches in time t1 and other reaches at t2 the range is same the range is same but h1 may not be equal to h2 or t1 may not be equal to t2 okay then what are the relation let's find sum of two heights h2 plus h1 h2 h2 let's take for theta in place of h2 u square sin square theta by 2g minus h1 for alpha u square sin square alpha but alpha is 90 minus theta if one angle is theta other is 90 minus 90 minus theta by 2g then u square by 2g bring it come sorry plus sum of heights plus sin square theta sin 90 by sin square sorry sin square 90 minus theta is cos square theta this is one then what we get h1 plus h2 is equal to u square by 2g sum of maximum heights is u square by 2g and the important points to remember sum of maximum heights independent of angle of projection sum of maximum height independent of angle of projection u square by 2 then difference in height if you take h2 or h1 minus h2 minus sign is not considered h1 minus h2 h1 minus h2 u square sin square 90 minus theta divided by 2g minus u square sin square theta divided by 2g if you take h2 minus h1 then it will not differ only negative sign will come but we want uh, what is difference in heights the value of difference in height negative sign doesn't matter then h1 minus h2 this is is equal to u square sin square 90 minus theta is cos square theta divided by 2g minus u square sin square theta by 2g then i am writing here directly h1 minus h2 is u square by 2g bring it comma u square by 2g then inside bracket cos square theta minus sin square theta means this is cos 2 theta Thus, difference in height is u square by 2g into cos square theta minus sin square theta is cos 2 theta. Okay. Then, product of time period t1 into t2. In place of t1, you write 2 sin theta by g. This is the formula. In place of t2, you write 2 u sin 90 minus theta by g. Then, it is 2 by g, 2 by g. Then u into u, u square into 2, another 2 is left, sin theta, sin 90 minus theta is cos theta divided by g. Then this is equals to 2 by g into u square sin 2 theta by g. Then product of time period, I am writing here, product of time period is equal to 2 by g u square sin 2 theta by g is r 2 by g u square sin 2 theta by g is r means 2 r by g these are very important formula let's keep it, keep it in your mind okay fine then again so one one question it is given question i am writing in this form Sum of heights attained by two projectiles projected with complementary angle. Sum of heights in complementary projection is given x. Okay. And difference in height and difference in height is given y. Then it is asked find velocity of projection and angle of projection. So h1 plus h2 u square by 2g is equal to x then velocity of projection is root of 2gx first answer came then what is angle of projection 
Yes, it is asked to calculate angle of projection. Okay, angle of projection you can calculate easily. H1 minus H2, H1 minus H2 is 1, but H1 minus H2 is U square by 2G into cos 2. Then y is equal to u square, u square is 2gx divided by 2g cos 2 theta. Then 2g, 2g get cancelled, cos 2 theta is equal to y by x, y by x. Then 2 theta is equal to cos inverse y by x. Then angular projection is 1 by 2 cos inverse y by x. Okay, this is the question then... Okay, another bit is asked if heights are 10 by the projectiles is 4 meter and 9 meter, find the range, oh, this is another conceptual bit, oh, given, given, h1 is equal to 4 meter, H2 is equal to 9 meter, then find range of projectile. This is a formula. You must remember it. Range is equal to 4 root of H1, H2. This is your formula. You can derive the formula. So range is equal to u square sin 2 theta by g. From this you can calculate H1 and H2. Sorry, this relation. The square and sum. The square and solve, it will take some time. Just remember this formula. The range is equal to 4 root of 4 into 9. So range is equal to 4 root of 36. So range is equal to 4 into 6. That is equal to 24 meter. What is the answer? Yes, 24 meter. You just keep it in mind for objective base. Fine. This is about complementary projection. And final bit. For board level discussion, final bit for board level discussion, then some analysis points are also there. Projectile third at an angle with horizontal, I will discuss those numericals in different lectures. Okay. Hi. Then the last bit, last bit of today's class, instantaneous, instantaneous. Velocity means velocity at any instant of time c. A body is projected. This is last bit with a velocity u making an angle theta and goes like this. The body is projected when time is zero and as you know ux is equal to u cos theta, uy is equal to u sin theta and acceleration due to gravity g which opposes u sin theta instantaneous velocity. Let's consider this point p when time is t. The projectile reaches at point p when time is t. Projectile is move, moving in a curved path then at this point velocity, direction of velocity is along the tangent. This is the direction of instantaneous velocity and it will have two components along x-axis and along y-axis. The component along x-axis is vx, component along y-axis is vy. Okay. Then what is Vx? So, horizontal component always remains constant. So, Vx is equal to Ux. So, Vx is equal to U cos theta along x-axis means unit vector is I. By C. U sin theta and acceleration due to gravity. What you have discussed? U y is A, U sin theta and acceleration in y-axis is minus G. Then V is equal to U plus AP. Then VY is equal to U1, U sin theta. AY is minus G, time is T. Then in vector form, you may take J. And resulting velocity V is equal to VX plus U1. So you may write U cos theta, I cap. In place of Vx, in place of Vy, you may write u sin theta minus gt in jk. Okay. Then magnitude of velocity, angle between Vx and Vy is 90 degree. So square root of Vx square plus Vy square. 
angle between two vectors is 90 degree and according you may write here u cos theta square plus u sin theta minus gt whole square and angle let resulting velocity be next on angle alpha with x axis then tan alpha very easy perpendicular upon base v y by v x v y by then putting value of v y and v x you can calculate tan alpha and according to alpha is equal to alpha is equal to tan inverse v y by v x okay. and some questions may come on the basis of instantaneous velocity let question asked like this a body is projected with a velocity of 10 meter per second making an angle 53 degree with horizontal then what is the instantaneous velocity at t is equal to 2 seconds very easy for 53 degree you may take like this this is 4 this is 3 this is 5 this angle is 53 degree and this is 90 degree ok from this you can calculate cos theta and sin theta so here cos theta is 3 by 5 and sin theta is 4 by 5. So it is asked to calculate oh, what is velocity. I am doing here using the equation. Diagram also required. This is the last bit of today's class. This is last bit of today's class. Half question. This is u. This is theta. This is u x, u cos theta, this is u y, u sin theta and acceleration due to gravity is g. Instantaneous velocity at this point, instantaneous velocity is v. Okay. Then v x, let's calculate v x first, v x is, uh, v x is u cos theta, u is 10 into cos theta, 3 by 5. Then 2 into 3, 6 I can. Then V. Vy is u sin theta minus gt. U is 10. U sin theta. Theta is sin theta is 4 by 5. Minus g. Let's take 10. T. Let's take 2. Then Vy is equal to 2 into 4. Two into four eight eight minus twenty it comes in negative so let's uh, change the data suppose fifty meter per second okay now fifty this is seventy five ten into three thirty this is fifty ten into four forty forty minus twenty twenty yeah. that is easier form I have not taken negative vx and vy you got then you can calculate magnitude of final velocity 30 i cap plus 20 j cap so magnitude of velocity square root of 30 square plus 20 square plus 20 square also also it may be asked find displacement find displacement see to reach at this point, the body has covered a distance x along x axis, a distance y along y axis, and along x, velocity is constant, and x is equal to u cos theta into t. Then x is equal to u cos theta, u is 50. Cos theta, cos theta is 3 by 5 into time, t is 2 second into 2 second. Then x is equal to this is 10 into 3, 30 into 2 60 meter then what y is equal to along this u sin theta acceleration is minus g s is equal to u t u sin theta into t minus half g t square and put all the required values x and y and this is the displacement this is x this is y let displacement vector is s then s vector is equal to 
x vector plus y vector in vector form you, know, you can take i cap and j cap and put here and magnitude of displacement is the angle between them is 90 degree root of x square plus y square you can calculate like this so these are forms of question i have neglected the calculation you can calculate well better than me <laughs> okay so this was fundamental class on projectile motion so a projectile fired from ground fired from horizontal at an angle theta with ground okay in next class we will discuss a projectile projected at an angle from a height a projectile projected at an angle angle may be zero degree means parallel velocity may be parallel to the ground or inclined in upward or inclined in downward direction okay next class we'll again meet with beautiful concepts thanks my dear children thanks